Okay, so today what I'd like to do is basically review how I tend to code in content analysis, and in particular, how to code maps using content analysis. And so, first of all, the goal of content analysis is to basically quantify or standardize qualitative information and data about, you know, basically looking for things of qualitative nature and getting them in a format that's quantitative enough that you can actually do descriptive statistics or non-parametric statistics or if you have enough information just flat out you know regular old um, metric statistics so um, the goal is to do that now generally you're using a large sample and in order to standardize the qualitative attributes what you have to do is come up with a list of codes and if you've gotten this far, you probably know that. It's very important before you begin your analysis that you have codes that are well defined and basically are able, are resilient enough and flexible enough to deal with any contingencies that certain maps throw at you. For example, a map shouldn't come along and throw a curveball or many curveballs at you that you hadn't thought about while devising your codes because then you basically have to go back and redefine your codes, come up with new categories, and then basically start the whole process over again. So you don't want that to happen, trust me. Now, uh, what I have here are a bunch of codes that um, I've been developing with um, people at Oregon State for analyzing flow maps. And so basically, this is my code definition sheet. It's totally separate from my research itself, but what I've done is I've written definitions and tweak them as I've done some beta testing for each code what it means exactly and this is important because then generally you need to be doing coding in groups of two so that it's replicable so that two people actually agree and come to the same conclusions about how something is coded or quantified and it's good if there are any questions that you can both refer to definitions written before you start the process and use this to come reconcile any differences you might have. So here I have, how many codes do I have now? 31 codes for flow maps. And basically with content analysis, what's going to be done is we're going to go through and analyze each flow map in our sample. And right, oh, I think we're shooting for over 100. Right now we have about 80 um, in exactly the same way using these definitions. And this definition sheet is really, really useful. And you, you really want to write this and work on it pretty hard before you start your research. Another thing is, with maps, oftentimes things are quite visual. Don't be afraid to make charts explaining it. So sometimes words don't explain as well as images. So here is, here's a chart showing what we mean by symmetrical curved and asymmetrical straight. Here's a chart showing what we mean by different sized arrowheads. Um, so don't be afraid to um, use, use these, uh, make your own images and embed them in here. All right, so we're not going to look at this anymore. Now let's start looking at how we can actually code a map. I use SPSS. You can do it in Microsoft Excel. You can do it in you know, OpenOffice. I don't care, Google Docs. A variety of different techniques. There's specialized software for content analysis. Atlas TI is one I've used, and I, I've really enjoyed it. The problem with Atlas TI for me is it's even though they've made leaps and bounds and made it to, good for analyzing web pages, etc., it's still very clunky when it, for me when it comes to images. I almost just like being able to have a map pop up and just typing stuff in with a numpad into a spreadsheet. Whatever. However you decide to do it is fine. As long as you get it in a form that can be exported as a, you know, a CSV file or something so that it can be brought in for statistical analysis later. So what I do generally is I like to have digital copies when possible of my maps just for archival sake and it's easier to keep them together. Images don't have to be high quality. They can be taken with your Android camera or whatnot, but just having it, depending on, you know, maybe they do have to be high quality depending on your research. For this one, they certainly don't have to be, um, but it's nice to have them all in one place, all the maps you're analyzing. And also for replicability, you can throw them online then later, and if someone else wants to try to prove or disprove your study or replicate it, it's all there. So this is a map that my colleague found, and I just coded it in a demo earlier, and then I lost every the whole thing I recorded, so it's a Friday now, 5 p.m. I'm getting kind of tired and cranky, so I apologize if I start losing it or just stop making sense. So the coding process. Um, 
one thing I like about SPSS, A, it's a statistical software package, so you can pretty much run statistics as soon as you're done. But one great thing is um, looks just like any other spreadsheet. You've got your variables across the top. These are our codes that we're coding for, and each line represents a map. As you can see, I already did eight beta tests on different flow maps. And I, I've been doing this, and I'm still not done. I'm going to do it a little bit more. Because every time you code a map, you run into issues with your definitions. And you want to keep beta testing until you stop running into questions or concerns or missing codes or new ideas that pop into your mind that you hadn't thought of before with each new map. You want some consistency where your codes actually work for all flow maps. And so far, I haven't achieved that quite yet. I'm getting close, though. As you can see earlier on, I added another code in the middle because I was like, we need to code for this. Um, but yeah, I keep changing the definitions, and every time you change the definitions, you have to go back to your sheet here and change them before you forget, etc. So this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to code in here. One thing I want to show you quickly that SPSS does, and as do a bunch of other software packages, if I click on variable view, here we are. We have all of our codes going vertically now. And you can set up basically shortcuts, keyboard shortcuts. And so, for example, here under direction or flow direction. If I type the letter B, it'll plug in bi-directional. If I type N, no direction, and U, unidirectional. So I have shortcuts for almost all of these, except for the ones where you just punch in numbers, so that you don't have to do a lot of typing. And though at first you'll be a little rusty, after you do this for an hour, you'll, ha you'll have these codes memorized, and it'll save you a lot of time. I don't have them memorized yet, so this is going to be a little slow. So let's start here. All right. Let's um, map ID. You can number them in your database. Um, we haven't done that yet, so I'm just going to type the name of the file, Chapman 1979 from Parks 1987. All right, era. This is just kind of not all maps have a year on them, so I've broken it down into eras. Country. We don't know the country. This is something I'm still working on in the coding before we get started, I have to decide, are we just going to use language or are we going to use country? Because most maps don't have a country of origin written on them, so maybe German, English, Chinese works better. Flow map type. So if I didn't know what this meant, I could go to my code definitions. Flow map type based off of Slocum, distributive, transportation, telecommunications, radial. Um, this is a radial one, I know that, but basically they're all defined there. I will type the letter R for radial, it pops in. Measurement level, hey, where'd my map go? There we go. Volume of flows and tons, zero up, it's ratio. R's the shortcut there. Data description. Um, so basically we're gonna type a flow map showing volume of flows and tons without telling us what is being mapped. All right. That's mostly for, if you go back, you can, um, you know which one's, what it's being spoken about. It's just good to have a little shorthand in there. Flow legend. Does it have a legend? Yes. Um, map scale. Does it have a scale? Yes. Whoops. That one doesn't have a code yet. Apparently I didn't make codes for this. Oh, here we go. Sorry. Bar scale. All right, multivariate map, nope. And I'm actually going to blow this up more so you can see a little better. Uh, var variable sh shown via flows, variable shown via flows, one variable, just tons. So just one. As you can see, I just added this code after the last one. Line types, straight lines, SL, flow direction, unidirectional, bidirectional type, not bidirectional, arrowheads, um, one arrowhead, whoops, so I just typed the number, letter one, geometric, or, oh, arrowhead style, So this is where we would go geometric sim point, geometric wide point, and this one's actually, this is a good um, 
This is a good example of a dilemma. Is this a wide point or a thin point? So let's go back to our definitions. I would say that this is closer to a thin point because wide points are really why, why geometric slim is just kind of a regular arrow. So we'll call this geometric slim. We'll see if my colleague agrees when she or he goes through this. Stacked flows, no stacked flows in this map. I apologize that this is so boring to watch, but it's probably good I just go through the whole thing. Like I said, it's Friday. I'm getting, I'm losing it here. Number of flows. Let's count this puppy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. So twenty-three flows. Are the flows labeled? No. Aligned variables. So how are these scaled? I think that these are kind of randomly scaled. So 0 to 50, unless that's really 9, that'd be 18 of those. There's, there's no way. So arbitrary scaling. You could say graduated scaling too, I guess. And this is an example of uh, how do we how do we argue this? I guess they're they're graduate they're graduated because they are in classes, so this would be graduated scaling. Arbitrary would be just lines of different um, widths, but no hue, none of that stuff. Okay. Line symbolization, geometric. They don't have pictures in them or texture. Line transparency, no transparency. Line width changes, stays the same throughout the whole length of it. Number of intersections, I've actually checked, there are zero. Intersection angles, there are no intersections. Map ground style. So actually, when I first looked at this map and then lost my recording, I realized that I didn't have the right code for this because I had light background, dark background, or medium background, but this is obviously mixed. So I just went in and added another code called light and dark, voila. And this is why you do beta testing. Map coloration, this is actually a black and white map. Region of the earth, it's a country. Um, that's number three in shorthand. Reference map detail, um, I would say three. Detailed for given scale, has Lake Superior and Isle Royale, that's all you need. Base map labeling, none. Enumeration unit detail, um, detailed, let's make sure I got the right one. Detailed borders, they're not totally abstract like a cartogram or something. And north at the top, yes. Voila, we're done. One map done, 99 more to go and a sample of 100. Um, you get faster at it, and not all maps are this hard, and also not all maps are this easy, unfortunately. <laughs> so um, I'll show you an example of one that won't be that easy. This one. All right, but this is an example of how to um, code for content analysis. And like I said, this I'm still in the preliminary beta stage, so I'm still have, flushing out questions and certain issues are popping up. But once a couple more of these maps, I think we'll have them pretty well flushed out, and then we're ready to get rolling. Thanks for watching.